Hey everyone, it's Brandy, and you're watching Abstract Crafter. We're gonna do a framing video today. I finally figured out which painting I could do that would fit in the frame. So, if you wanna see how I frame traditionally, then just keep on watching and we'll get right into that as soon as we roll that intro clip. Alright, we're going to get right into this. You're going to need a ruler, maybe, a good pair of scissors, and I have an X-Acto knife here. You're also going to need a diamond painting of your choice, and I'm going to show off the glitter a little bit. Not the glitter, the glitz. So, you're going to need one of them. You're going to need a frame. I'm using a 12 by 18 poster and wall frame that you can get at Walmart. I got mine at the thrift store for 50 cents. So, I'm doing my first voiceover because I just thought it would be better this way. I don't know. Sometimes my voice travels too much when I'm trying to do a teaching tutorial. So, all I'm doing here is I'm just gonna take the wrap off. Um, the red that you see underneath is a poster board that I got at the dollar store for 69 cents. I thought red would be good. And here are assembly instructions. If you want to pause on that, go ahead. Or go back and pause on it. <laughs> this is the kind where you have to make sure you're checking those hooks so that you don't put it on upside down. I've done that before. Not that it takes a lot, but I hate lifting these tabs. And there's like 10 on this one. And I'm just lifting those up to show you guys and to pull it out. So then... I'm deciding here if I want to use that as the template, but obviously I decide against that. And then you're going to see me. Now, just keep in mind that, that that's plastic, and, and it's distorting me a little bit. <laughs> uh, so uh, here I'm deciding if I want to use the plastic or the paper to use to cut out the red poster board. So this is just going to be the most basic framing that you can do. And look, that bright light, that's my camera and my white light that I use for filming. So you're seeing a glimpse into part of my setup. <laughs> and I'm just, I have to have things in just the right place so I'm moving everything around. So what I decided to do here then is to line up the plastic to the edge of the poster board rather than trying to cut in the middle and I have to actually go over this quite a few times I don't I even end up using the ruler I think I'm going to but I don't and uh, I'm checking in my camera right now to make sure that you can see and I think the mistake I made here was not using the tip of the exacto knife uh, I'm just trying to keep it butted up right against the plastic there and just kind of glide it along and I slipped right there and so I get mad, and I'm like, well, I'm just going to go the other direction. <laughs> I don't know why. And I made a light cut at first, because I thought maybe I could just score it, take it off, and then come back and, like, cut it again, and you'll see me kind of lift that plastic up and look like I can maybe put the ruler up there or something. But not really. So this is just... Like I said, this is the most simple way that you can frame a diamond painting. And we can get into some other framing ideas. This is just my preferred way. Uh, I do have some that I bought from the thrift store that I'd like to refinish and use as framing. But it's going to be pretty much the same steps as this. Just with sanding and painting the wood. So yeah, I've decided that ruler is useless and I want to put the plastic back and cut deeper this time. And the first time I think I was off a little bit because when I get done I actually end up with a little tiny, I'd say like a quarter centimeter overage, but it doesn't really affect the framing process. So 
And there I go. Now I'm trying to make sure I got that nice and deep. And I don't notice it, but I've got it all except for that top portion. And I'm so sorry. My hair keeps flying in the frame. I try to, like, spray it and comb it back, but I'm not always successful at doing that. Uh, See, so yeah, now I'm just like, come on. I'm kind of getting mad about this so I'm putting my face in there so you can see the top of my glasses my flyaway hair is getting in the way it's so annoying that my hair does that I mean you're not really missing out on anything major here so now I just gotta get that long cut more perfected so that I can actually I want to get it most of the way cut out so then I can just cut like the little bits that are sticking out here and there so no big deal I'm just putting a lot of pressure down now had I done that the first time I wouldn't have to worry about coming back and cutting it multiple times so learn from my mistakes friends cut put pressure down right away you're not gonna hurt anything this isn't even a brand new exacto it's pretty dull and right here and then a couple other spots it does look like my fingers in the way but it is not in the way of the actual blade. I've had X-Acto slip on me too many times. You don't even feel it. You just start bleeding. So you can see there where I kind of cut the paper. It's like right in that very bottom corner. It's, but you don't notice that. That part goes under the frame. So now I'm going to bring the diamond painting in and I'm going to I don't know why I put it on top. I need to slide it underneath because I'm trying to determine if I have to cut all four edges off of the diamond painting or if I can leave them. If you wanted to, you could just fold them under if you're not comfortable cutting up your diamond painting. But I've done it a couple times now and, and I just I like that effect better. It can look a little lumpy if you fold, when you fold it over if you can't get that sit just right or if you don't have a tight enough frame so I've learned that I just like it cut now I'm bringing it up to show you that this painting has a dark black line and that's what I'm going to be cutting on and the first cut's always like the most nerve-wracking because you're cutting into your diamond painting but once you get going it's pretty nice now these particular scissors I will show them to you up close pretty soon here but these are some titanium non-stick and they are really nice for doing this kind of thing because my other like just general crafting scissors that I usually use in all my unboxings they have white handles the glue sticks on them and then by the time I get to the last uh, like edge of the diamond painting and go to start cutting I have to clean the glue off of it first and this is these are really nice I specifically bought them for cutting things like this and like when I work on crafting projects it can cut through like double if I've doubled up some paper or something with double-sided sticky tape it cuts through it no problem and if some does get on there for whatever reason it's pretty easy to get off and I think I bring a ruler in at some point because uh, there's a few of the diamonds that either got bumped off or just weren't placed properly to begin with. So they're hanging off the edge a little bit and kind of getting in the way of my cutting. So I, if I don't bring it in again and I already brought it in and I just talked through it, that's why I'm trying to push the diamonds in. So... I really, really like this painting. I think it would look beautiful in a kitchen. Plus it's coffee. I love coffee. Coffee is like my favorite thing in the whole wide world. See right there, I'm struggling a little bit because the diamonds are sticking off the edge. So yeah, here comes the ruler. And I'm pushing those diamonds back. Even if they spring back, I'm just trying to push them long enough to stay out of my way. And I think I do that again on on another side. The only thing I don't like about these scissors is that the blades themselves are very short and the very tip of it isn't very blunt. So, or it's more blunt, it's not very pointy. And, and so sometimes it can cause creasing 
if you just like make a sharp cut and I don't know it's kind of hard to explain without being able to show you but it can kind of yeah uh, make some weird creases when you're finished cutting and so now I'm just trying to cut off a little bit of extra that I had forgot not that it really matters but OCD 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 doesn't let me get away with not cutting it you know and I can't even wait till I'm completely done with the painting I have to do it right then and there so here I'm just straightening out those diamonds again to try to push them into place because so once they're under the frame it's not going to matter as much and I'm not going to be inspecting it I'm not even ever going to take it back out of the frame so if they want to pop off that's fine but so far I haven't had too bad a luck I think this makes diamond painting number four that I have framed. Uh, one of them, I, maybe two of them, two of them I believe I kept the border that I'm cutting off now, I kept it on, one of them I folded it under, one of them I just taped down, and the first one I ever did, I cut the matting out and put it over it versus putting the diamond painting on top of the paper like I'm doing in this one. And you can s kind of see my husband off to the side. He's messing with our cell phone over there. I'm like trying to plug it in. And so here I'm showing you, these are Fiskars Titanium Nonstick. Really good for this kind of thing. And general crafting when you're using double-sided sticky tape and glue and stuff. So now we're going to get into finishing up details. I do it twice. I do it right after I finish a painting, when, before I do my post review on it, and then I do it again just before I frame. And of course I have to get everything out of the way. So I'm taking the toothbrush and I'm really, and I do it three different ways. I go really quick and try to just get anything loose. I come back and I go in circular motions, and then I come back and try to just brush it things out so I'm showing you my toothbrush and then so this is just where I'm just quickly trying to kind of be rough with it a little bit and put a little bit of pressure down onto it not so much though that I'm like I don't know roughing up the diamonds or anything just rough enough to knock anything out like cigarette ashes dog hair crumbs, I don't know, <laughs> whatever gets into a diamond painting, honestly. And so now I'm just doing circular motions because that helps when there are animal hairs stuck on it. So that when I go to do this next, so like now I'm brushing off of the painting. So the circular motions help to do that. So you're getting framing and finishing tips. And I go on all four edges and try to make sure I brush off every single side. Um, I kind of try to pull from the middle, but not really. It's my edges that typically get it. Now I'm going to use the rolling pin to make sure everything is in and everything was, so I didn't need to really roll it. And again, I try to go from both directions. So I'm going to do, I think, sides, the side, the middle, and the side, and then I go the long way on it, just to try to get them from every angle. And I think I've mentioned it before, if this was a bigger painting, I would even go in diagonal on it from corner to corner just to try to get diamonds to pop in any which way. I haven't really had that much bad luck with drills not staying in place, only on a couple of paintings, so I've actually been pretty lucky with that kind of thing. Of course, I haven't framed too many, I've only framed a couple. Here are the wipes I like to use. These are Huggies baby wipes. They're called One and Done. And they're cucumber and green tea, but they have a really, really light smell. If you don't like that smell, there is unscented versions of this, and they come in just a green package. Looks just the same. It's just green instead of that teal color. And so this I, I rub and... I'm looking, and I notice that I'm wiping something gross off of there, and I'm showing you for some reason. Um, so I go this way, and then I will go in circular motions, and then I'll try to go in different directions. 
So again, the circular motions help pull any hairs out that might be in there. And these diamonds were really nice to work with. So any dirt that I'm pulling off, it's from myself. It's not, the first time I cleaned it, it was really good. I'm just showing you when it looks like that and you start to get, starts to look a little pilly, then you wanna switch directions. Interestingly enough, I start pulling up um, some pink, like marker almost, and I have no idea where it came from. So I don't know if I was pulling dye off of the beads or if it was like reminiscent from the washi tape itself. I don't know where it came from. But I do notice that I start finding pink on my baby wipe. Yeah, so then I'm just doing the same thing I kind of did with the toothbrush. And I have to fold it a bunch of times. Okay, now I'm done. And I'm kind of shaking it to dry it off because these do leave bubbles behind, but I, they don't affect the glue at all. Sometimes it can make your glue better if you notice that your glue is not very tacky. And I've had to wipe down my glue for whatever reason. I've noticed that it actually can help make it a little bit more tacky. Certain glues. Anyway. So now I'm kind of looking and I'm realize that I forgot my double-sided sticky tape. I like to just tape down the corners so it doesn't move on me. I've made that mistake. So there's just Elmer's Tape Runner. Really good stuff. Very cheap. You can get this at Walmart and the refills are pretty cheap too. So I'm just lining it up the best that I can just by eyeing it. Oh. Typically I would measure it but I felt pretty confident in that. So I didn't, but more times than not, and see, I forgot a little bit on that corner there, enough to bother me. But of course, it, you're not always going to get that perfectly straight unless you cut that with a razor. I didn't want to do that because it was a really thick canvas, really good canvas. So now I'm just inspecting it to make sure that I got it cut fairly well all the way. And glue. I'm sorry, I just coughed at you. So all I'm doing is putting the smallest amount on there, just enough to keep it from sliding around. And I think in the other corners, I feel like I need more. And I am flattening it to make sure, because it seemed to like hold its position when I lifted up these corners. It didn't want to lay flat again. And you can't even see the tape, so. And then I think when I'm done, I do it again. And this one, I, for some reason, it wouldn't come off with a roller. There we go. Now I'm going to smooth it out. Just It's a OCD texture thing. I like the feeling, <laughs> I guess. It's a really cool feeling if you've ever done it. And so here we go. Now I'm going to make sure that my tabs are the right way. But, and I'm just literally going to slide it under, and this is my way of kind of eyeing it up and making sure that I got everything to fit. And see, I'm showing you to make sure you got that the right way. <laughs> it only takes forgetting to do it once, and I unfortunately did it on Tell Me Stories, and that had three times as many tabs on it than this one. This one, I think I told you, has four, five, six, seven, eight. That one probably had about 20, and I got it the wrong way, so I had to lift all of those up again. So that's when I'm realizing that I'm going to have to piece it back together in the frame. What am I doing? Okay, there she comes. There comes the frame. And then I'm like, kind of thinking, you're kind of an idiot. You don't even got your plastic. Cause this is not glass. It's not even acrylic. It's plastic. Which is probably why it was like, in Walmart you can get these for like $5 and under. And like I said, I got this at the thrift store for 50 cents. I thought that was a really good deal. It might have been a dollar. But all in all, I got this painting sent to me free for review. I paid 50 cents to a dollar for the frame. And I got the poster board for 69 cents. So I paid $1.69 for this whole diamond painting. Well worth it. And I would have gladly paid 
the $30 that I've seen this painting go for. That's how good it was. So now here I'm kind of realizing that my red paper is just a tiny bit too big, but I don't have to go back and cut it or anything. I can just like fold it and it fits in there nicely and it kind of actually helps keep that cardboard backing a little bit more secure. And I do realize I'm a little bit off frame, but really you're not seeing anything. So I'm just lifting that side up so I can flatten it and then I'll fold that end in better to make sure that it, everything's in there nice and snug. Um, and then uh, here comes the uh, cardboard and I think I double check before I put those tabs down to make sure that I got it the right way. And those tabs can be a pain. Even if some of them break off, I've had these frames where they've broken off on me and it's okay as long as you have at least one on each side. <laughs> Preferably more, but there we go. So I'm realizing there I got it the right side. Okay, so there's three on the long side and two on the other side. So I mean, as long as you've got most of those tabs all together, if a couple of them break, it's no big deal. It'll still hold pretty tight. And so there she goes. I'm going to insert a picture here. So this is just a still picture of it. I think it turned out really beautifully. And I just did that because I move it around quite a bit here now. So that's all there is to it. That's the most basic way to frame a video. And you'll have to let me know if you like the voiceover. I'm giving you the thumbs up approval. So yeah, let me know in the comments if this is how you frame, if you have a different way of framing. Um, I'm going to try a shadow box next, but really, uh, thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to let you go now. Have an awesome day. Have fun diamond painting. Have fun crafting. Have fun doing whatever it is that makes you happy. I love you, friends, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!